Welcome back to Morgan's video blog with writing tips from the pros and of course my own writerly musings. Today I'm here with Worldcon 2021. This past weekend, despite external stressors, with the help and support of my family, I hit Worldcon 2021, otherwise known as Discon 3 in Washington, D.C. Worldcon is the home of the prestigious Hugo Awards, selected by supporting members, not a board of elites, and the convention is held in a different city every year, traditionally in August. In 2020, it was hosted in New Zealand, but held virtually. This year, between the Delta spike and the original host hotel closing, we had the first December Worldcon in its 76 years. I live less than an hour outside of Washington, D.C., and was honored to have my panelist application accepted. I moderated a panel on putting fandom volunteer work on your resume and helped fill a gap on a panel about avoiding Twitter dumpster fires. As a qualifier for that second one, I'm pretty sure I've got the worst follower to engagement ratio that doesn't include bots on Twitter. I hit 10k followers like two weeks ago, but I'm pretty sure I only get like 10 or 20 people ever see or interact with me. So, the con for me started on Thursday, December 16th. My convention started off with a wrong turn. Who names the street before the hotel with the same name and doesn't have a convenient turning around spot? 15 minutes later, I finally make my way in the exit of the valet parking and got myself sorted. I checked in, settled my bags, then picked up my badge and program. The first thing I do at a convention is to sort out where the rooms are, especially for events I'm on. The hotel was odd with half levels and meandering paths. There were chairlifts for most of the event spaces, but they were not easy to find. And I did hear that there was at least one panelist who had to drop from a panel with like an hour notice because they're like, oops, that panel's not accessible to people with mobility issues. So as the hotel was not a traditional convention hall, the spaces were odd. The function room seemed either too large or too small for most of the events. And the dealers were set up in a converted parking garage with sloped floor, low ceiling, and lighting that made me think cyberpunk. I found as I scanned the program that a decent percentage of the panels that I specifically wanted to attend were available either only virtually or both in person and virtual. And any panel that was virtual either in part or in whole was going to be posted online for members up to 30 days um, counting from when the video got online. That meant that my usual frantic panel hopping was toned down tremendously. All in all, I hit six panels, including my two, one workshop that was actually a presentation, and three readings, including two that I participated in. I plan to hit more panels once they're posted. As I wandered the convention, the first person I really knew who I ran into in the halls was my dad. After a quick loop around the dealer's hall, it was time to prep for my first panel and my first time moderating in person where I couldn't like lean on Google to help. Nerves were high. Additionally, I was waiting for news from a loved one where the deadline kept changing. The panel went smoothly, although I think I need to be a little more lively and less scripted. After my panel, I snagged a cereal bar, then checked out the art show. While there, I ran into a friend who had helped me staff Balticon 55, who said he was going to the open mic and I'd had that on my potential schedule. So I figured a conference of writers and, you know, readers was the right time to read my poem, A Peek Into the Mind of a Querying Writer. I was a smidge late, um, but there was still an open slot on the sheet 
There were award-winning poets and amazing writers. I was intimidated, but I did get a few chuckles. Next up was Finding the Authorial Voice, an excellent panel. You'll see notes in the new year. Dinner was quietly in my room because COVID. Uh, when I opened up the curtains to get some light though, I found that my room had a tiny balcony and a half decent view of the sunset, which like my house doesn't. So kind of excited there. Finally, I did some room party hopping. Uh, SFF, science fiction and fantasy conventions, have a tradition of having clubs and cons running room parties, usually snacks and drinks and hanging out, depending on the crowd for how exciting. There was a board outside of the dealer's hall telling the room numbers and times for each of the parties. While leaving one of the parties, I had a brief chat with the organizer of the Broad Universe readings for Friday night. Broad Universe is a writer support network for women of all kinds who write science fiction and fantasy. They also host tables and group readings at conventions. I joined a few years ago and actually got a mentorship through their um, trial mentorship program. So we got to chatting and I mentioned I was a member and she invited me to take the reading slot for another member who'd had to drop. But I'm not published. Doesn't matter. And all of a sudden, I was scheduled for another event. I asked the length of the reading, thinking I might share a fairy tale I polished last year, but the time slot was too short. She headed out and left me thinking. Outside the window, I spotted fire pits and headed outside to socialize a little more safely. The weather was lovely, like 60 degrees. I, I think that's 16 in Celsius. And I even shared some cookies and fudge with some friends. And then bedtime, way too late, because it's a con. Friday, December 17th, I woke up and scanned the schedule and found the panel I'd intended to hit was only virtual. So I dressed and did a circuit of the con. And then it was time for creating new mythology from Hidden Histories, another fantastic panel I'll be talking about in the new year. While there, I ended up sitting next to, well, next to in COVID terms, uh, one of the people who had beta read my manuscript, the one I'm actively querying. He asked me about it and remembered enough to give me some kind words and good advice. It was definitely the pick me up I needed. Did you know that rubbing elbows with the SFF elite does not make you immune to rejection letters? Yeah, my email let me know that one on Friday. Meanwhile, I was getting expected but stressful updates from a loved one and tracked down a couple of good hugs. My second panel was at 5 p.m. Bad kidneys and other NFTs. All about avoiding Twitter dumpster fires. I was literally two thirds into the panel when I got the all good text update and was able to flip my phone over and focus a little better. I think the panel had lively conversation and I don't think I vocally talked over any of the far more prestigious panelists, but it did inspire me to up my moderator game. I walked over to get dinner at the Lebanese Taverna, uh, got a tweet message inviting me to join some writers I'd chatted with briefly for dinner while I was walking back with my food in hand. A little too late. Besides, I still needed time to panic over what to read at the Broad Universe reading that I'd agreed to the night before. Since the time slot was too short for a full story, I decided I'd read the opening to the manuscript I'm qu currently querying. As I did a practice run in my room, I started to hate everything about it. I decided that the world building description was slowing the pace and too much and of course that's why I've been getting form rejection after form rejection. I know. I knew it was foolish. I reached out to a couple friends and asked them to reassure me and they talked me down just in time to make it to the reading. The other authors were all published or soon to be and many were award winners. Such amazing stories were shared, or at least story snippets, and they were all so sweet and supportive of my piece. That evening, I did some more party hopping, including the fire pits and standing in the hallway outside the Winnipeg bid party. 
Um, bid parties are hosted by cons proposing to host future world cons while they called out raffle numbers. Neither I nor the two random strangers from the fire pit who'd asked me to check on their raffle tickets won anything. I let them know the bad news, then wandered and chatted with old friends and met new ones. Saturday, December 18th. My mornings were getting progressively slower, and I waffled on hitting the pitching workshop because I was nearly 10 minutes late already. But there was a seat left in what turned out to actually be a presentation, and as I don't share workshops or presentations because th that material belongs to a single person, these notes will not be going up, unfortunately. I had a lot of questions for the presenter that I probably should have skipped because he didn't make it through his slides, and it did have a lot of 101 information for the queriers who were probably in the room who weren't at the 102 or, I don't know, 401 level. Sorry. On the way out of the panel, I ran into the new writer friend who'd invited me to dinner the night before and met an in person, a panelist I'd worked with the year before. Next up was Short Fiction Expanded, which talked about all the ways you can grow a short story, and I hit him with a question about rights, lawyering, notes to come. I bumped into my new friends in the dealer's hall where we got to chatting, then finding a bench in the hallway, talking about M dashes, the myth of the two page synopsis, and debating which city had the better hockey team. I mean, obviously it's the Caps, not the Penguins. I mean, come on. When we split up for our next activities, I made it to the When Does Evil Become Irredeemable panel with 10 minutes to spare. Too bad it was in one of the smaller rooms and the door was already closed. If you made it in, can you share your notes? It sounded fascinating. After that, I hit From Grimm to Disney and back again, another panel with notes. Then I met up with my new friends and their friends for dinner, one of whom I actually already knew from my Facebook Pitch Warrior support group that I run. Um, after passing the sushi place twice because we were lost in conversation, we found out it was carry out only. So it was only two doors down from that delicious Lebanese taverna. I was just gonna hang out and order food to go, but because the re weather was almost as reasonable as the day before, the others decided to eat outside. So I actually ate with people instead of solo in my room for the only time that weekend. When we made it back to the hotel, the delayed Hugos were just getting ready to start. Apparently there had officially not been a fire, but there had been smoke and the hotel insisted it wasn't them and made the Worldcon staff check every inch of their equipment before they could begin. We headed to a live viewing room because I prefer making comments instead of formally sitting um, and the others decided a game of munchkin was the ticket. I snagged my laptop so we could live stream and while they played I did social media stuff and we all took a break so we could watch and let our hearts kind of break for the Hugo casted um, <clears throat> memorial. I live tweeted and Facebook posted the awards as they were posted and awarded to the Baltimore science fiction accounts that I run social media for. It was good to have company while I was doing that. Not sure if I should live tweet in the future or just do a single post with all the winners. Food for thought. So then I hung out with other friends, party hopped, and shut down the Capclave party. As a note, um, Chengdu won the Worldcon for 2023. Winnipeg did not. There was a bit of a kerfuffle because um, China kind of shut down credit cards. So people were doing the Chinese version of Venmoing one person who had a credit card that would work in the States money and then there would be a lot of uh, memberships on one card and it seemed sketch and there was a whole thing but congratulations to Chengdu um, obviously you know China has some problematic stuff but the fandom is not problematic so good luck and I'm excited to see what they have that's hybrid because I don't think I'm going to be able to make it out there so Sunday, December 19th, I went to get dressed and realized, despite having extra pants, socks, and everything else, 
I was a shirt short. So I did what any rational con goer would do on the final day of a con. I put a pajama top on, a fancy jacket, and decided it was a look. Because of holiday plans, I skipped the rest of the last day of the con so I could have the longest amount of time possible before visiting family without defeating my goal of for attending the con of meeting people face to face. All done, I got my car back, loaded everything up, and drove home before lunch. Catechist was a very happy to snuggle me. This was the longest I've been away since I adopted him. I thought about tuning in for some of the virtual portion of the convention, but then a nap attack struck. <sighs> what can you do? But I was out of bed before 4 p.m. because I live stream every Sunday, almost every Sunday, from 4.30 to 6.30 Eastern Time. And instead of writing sprints, one of my regular co-hosts, Sako Tumi, who's been a friend for years before we stumbled across each other in the AuthorTube community, um, she came over to my house and my other regular co-host, steampunk author Doc Coleman, joined virtually and we had a mellow low-key holiday party for our regulars. Monday, December 20th, the con was done and it was time to return to the day job once more. I awoke and thought I was well rested and then I went to rub my eye and scratched it. Yeah, without Catechist's help. After checking with friends and leaving a message with my primary care physician, I called my optometrist for, um, from a move ago and they had an opening. Kids' eyes are not something to take risks with. So verdict, I had flannel linked from my bed in my eye and I had managed to scratch the inside of my eyelid right by the crease, which is why blinking hurt. Fortunately, my delicate lasered eyes were unscratched and I didn't need antibiotics. Once home, I swabbed my nose, enjoyed my COVID negative test results, and grabbed lunch before returning to said day job. With the first of my post-COVID tests done, post-con COVID tests done, it was time to look forward to the next event of my life. I finished my evening with cheesy Christmas movies. Have you ever hit a con? What about a world con? If you were there, say hi and tell me if I ran into you. If not, you can say hi too. I like people. Have a great week and I'll be back again with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.